good evening. As you may or may not know, we are... The management. And we'd like to welcome you to this. The two runs, cabaret extravaganda. For the next hour, we'll be taking over the running of Channel 4. <laughs> and me and Ron, we got something special to give you lot tonight. And that's something special what we're going to give you is... Penicillin. Entertainment. <laughs> Penicillin, entertainment, same thing, innit? They both involve clapping. <laughs> I don't like clapping. I don't like Brighton. <laughs> As you may or may not know, we don't come from round here. We come from... Worm with scrubs. The East End. <laughs> oh, yeah, the East End. Ha, oh. ha. <laughs> like all East End people, we're warm, friendly... And psychopathic. <laughs> we like East Enders. Yeah, especially lofty. <laughs> hey, when I hold you up to my ear shell, I can hear the sound of the sea. <laughs> Oh dear on this smirking. Oh dear we do we me. Don't smirk. Here's a warning. Smirking can seriously damage your health. <laughs> but I'm diverging. I'm not. I've been with lots of girls. <laughs> Television. Television's come a long way since it was invented by its inventor. John Yogi Bear. <laughs> Nowadays, television's big business. Ron here knows all about big business. Since I've been on a high-fibre diet. <laughs> You'll have to be quicker than that tonight. Oh, I had to be pretty quick the other day. <laughs> television's moral standards are on the recline nowadays. It wasn't always like that. It wasn't like that in the good old days. Whatever happened to the good old days, eh? The programme was crap, so the BBC took it off the air. <laughs> There's anarchy on the television. Yeah, and she keeps leaping out of an helicopter on a treasure hunt. <laughs> There's anarchy on the television. We're going to change that tonight. We're going to impose a bit of discipline. In fact, Ronnie is going to lay on something special tonight. A blow-up dolly. A feast of entertainment. <laughs> Same thing, innit? Oh, yeah. So all you lot have to do is relax. And without any further ado... I do, Ron. 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 I do, Ron. <laughs> On with the show. Go. Oh, look, it's, it's Ralph, Ralph and Nessa. Yoo-hoo! Crispin and Tish, long time no see. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Super fantastic. Well, you're looking well. Mmm, feeling good. Been up too much lately. Oh, you know, the usual. How's things at the crash? Oh, don't. The whole thing's an absolute shambles since Mrs. Forbes left. Toys everywhere, kids screaming. It's more like a madhouse than an under five self awareness center. <laughs> anyway, enough about us. What about you? Well, actually, today's our anniversary. No, yes, super fantastic. How long has it been now? Oh, must be um, seven, seven, seven years. And you're still happy. Blissfully. And, and we're, we're so close, close that sometimes, sometimes I think we're only one and the same person. person. <laughs> oh, same here. Well, we, we seem, seem to know instinctively, instinctively what other is going to banana. Say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to speak out of turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, super fantastic. You must come to dinner sometime. No, you must come to us. It's our turn. I really want to mess with the whole thing too. After you. No, after you. I insist. No, really. Oh, bollocks. Ron Co. Records proudly present the Two Rons Christmas album. Swing in a Christmas with these classic tracks by the Two Rons. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Because if you do, I'm going to come round your place and stick a Christmas tree up your left nostril. <laughs> 
Spend this Christmas in the musical company of the two wrongs. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say, I did that. <laughs> 24 great tracks, 24 great memories. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me the pox. <laughs> and many, many more on the Two Run sensational Christmas album. Great tracks like Jingle Balls and the course. I saw Mummy Mugging Santa Claus. And not forgetting I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. And if I don't get one, then I'm personally going to remove Ian McGaskill's dangly bits and hang them up in my car window as a memento. <laughs> the Two Runs Christmas Party album is in your shops now. Silent night. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> this is grill! Come on, you two tucking, you haven't eaten nothing for weeks! That's why you're all skin and bone! <laughs> do you realise it's Christmas Day tomorrow? Yeah, I know, my first Christmas. Sighting, innit? What do you think I'll get? <laughs> I think you'll get a big surprise. <laughs> I expect you'll be really choked. <laughs> I suppose I will really, won't I? Derek, do you know what Christmas means? Yeah, of course I do. Presents. Hey, what are you going to get me? Go and tell me. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, don't. Yeah, yeah, go and tell me. No, no, no. They're clothes, Derek. Oh, good, a lot of clothes. A big <laughs> aluminium foil coat to keep you nice and warm. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> it's nice to have Christmas with your mates, isn't it? Hey, when all our Christmas dinner together and afterwards we put our feet up. <laughs> Pull the other one, it's got cranberry sauce on. <laughs> it's Christmas Eve. Have you thought about why we're here? Yeah, of course I have. Why? Because we're turkeys, aren't we? Yes. And it's a turkey farm, isn't it? Yes, but what happens to turkeys at Christmas time? What happens to turkeys at Christmas time? <laughs> Is it a joke? <laughs> well, I think it's pretty funny if that's so. <laughs> have some more. Oh, thank you. <laughs> There's something you ought to know about Christmas. Something that might upset you. Oh, Angela, don't be silly. I've known that Santa Claus doesn't exist for ages now. <laughs> now, listen, Derek, think hard. What do people have at Christmas time? Presents. <laughs> Presents? What else? Crackers! Um, crackers? Uh, to eat, Derek, to eat? Christmas pudding. Oh, before that. Soup. <laughs> 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 A turkeys! They have turkeys! Do they? <laughs> you mean we're all going to die? Only the fat ones, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'll go on a diet. How long have I got? 12 hours, I can lose a stone an hour, yeah. Oh, no, I'll make myself sick. Here, pass me that video of Cliff and Sarah oh, Brightman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to die! I don't want to die! Save me! Save me! <laughs> you know, kids, being a fat, greedy turkey can really screw you up. <laughs> stay thin. Stay alive. Status quo. I heard you cry tonight, knew you were sleeping tight, what were you dreaming? Was he the love of the guy, and did he make you cry while you were dreaming? I don't find it easy to say, but I think it's right that you have to know. Why won't you understand? You're being alone. 
there's Monterey Citron too. A delightful blend of fine white wine and brandy with a tang of lemon for those bittersweet moments. This flash unit is powered by Duracell. All the others by ordinary zinc carbon batteries. Now watch. See? Only Duracell lasts to give you the whole picture. Duracell. No ordinary battery looks like it or lasts like it. Give him Old Spice this Christmas. Every gift set comes with free Christmas wrapping. Old Spice. That's Christmas wrapped up. Every year, some people have their gas supply cut off because they don't contact British Gas or answer our letters when they realise they can't pay their gas bill. The pity is that in many cases we could have helped. As soon as you realise you're going to have trouble paying, go to your gas showroom or phone the number on the front of your gas bill. We'll do our level best to come to an arrangement that lets you pay it off at a rate you can afford. So if you can't pay your gas bill, get in touch with British Gas as soon as possible. We want to help, and we often can. Michael? Mr. Jackson? for me. <laughs> Tio Pepe, crisp and dry, straight or ice cooled. The finest sherry by Gonzales Bias. Unfortunately, Her Majesty couldn't make it today. She's a little tied up. And locked in a broom cupboard. <laughs> so we... The management... ...have come along to give you... ...the Christmas massage. <laughs> Very reasonable rates. You know, Christmas. I was just thinking. I wasn't. <laughs> I was just thinking. Christmas is all about love for your fellow man. Or woman. Yeah, or woman. Or... My Cindy doll. Her hair really grows. <laughs> At Christmas time, everybody loves somebody. Ronnie loves his mum. I love my mummy. In fact, his mum loves him. And she can remember the first words he ever uttered to her as a baby boy. Give us another Farley's Rusk, or I'll break your thumb, mum. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie is just sentimental. No, I'm not. I'm fully mental. <laughs> Christmas, all right, for Ron, is all about family. When Ron thinks about his family, it brings a tear to his eye. Yeah, because that's when my dad used to squirt ammonia in my face. <laughs> Memories of happy family scenes. The sizzle of the roast potatoes. The smell of the turkey. The sight of my grey-haired old mum pulling my pudding out of the oven. <laughs> but there's a deeper meaning to Christmas. At Christmas time, we think about those people who ain't got what we've got. Yeah. What ain't they got? They ain't got dames. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our Christmas message for you lot. This Christmas when you're at home having a good time. 
Spur a thought for those who are less fortunate than you are. Yeah, and then have a bloody good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> for all you rich people out there, this year, Ron's having a collection. Yeah. I normally get one when I'm sitting on the top deck of a bus. A <laughs> collection, Ron. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so remember, it's better to give than to receive. Yeah. You give us your money and you won't receive your kneecaps in the post. <laughs> post early. For safety. <laughs> So let's just recap for a moment, shall we? This problem you have is emotional. You experience isolation, pent-up anger, coupled with, as you call them, unnatural desires. That's right, yeah. I can't walk down the street without checking people's tax discs. <laughs> Stopping motorcyclists. And whenever I see a black geezer, I just want to go for his pockets. And you had these, shall we call them, feelings for about, um, 27 years. Yeah, I thought I'd better nip them in the bud before they got out of hand, you know? Mr. Simpkin, you've been coming here for several weeks now. I think I can tell you what your problem is. In my professional opinion, you are a policeman. <laughs> Mr. Simpkin. Mr. Simpkin, I know it's a shock. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm a pig. That's what you're trying to say. I'm filth. I'm raving rosa. Mr. Simpkin, those are just words society uses through ignorance. Lots of perfectly normal people come to terms with being a policeman, and by admitting it, you've taken the first important step. It all fits now. I remember as a kid, I always wanted to arrest my childminder. <laughs> I used to wheel clamp my dinky cars. <laughs> and when my mates come round to place a beauty all I wanted to do was walk round the pitch and look at the crowd. <laughs> Which was, when was it not you first started dressing up in uniform? Yeah, I joined this organisation, see. Well, I realise now it's the police, but at the time, I was only interested in the squash and the hectic social life. <laughs> all the time, in fact, denying your true police tendencies. My wife needs to know. I think so. Well, if you tell her, she'll be able to understand why you walk around the streets all night and <laughs> why you pick up total strangers and hold them for 48 hours. Oh, I sit down the station for days and then watching really filthy, disgusting blue movies, preferably with animals. <laughs> well, well, who you watch them with is up to you. <laughs> is there any treatment? Mr Simpkin... Today, society is more enlightened. We don't regard police as suffering from some kind of illness. You have to accept what you are and say, I am a policeman and I'm proud of it. What? You mean, I've been coming here these last six weeks and there's nothing wrong with me? No. You've just discovered your true self. <sighs> oh. Well, in that case... I'm afraid I'm going to have to arrest you. What for? Wasting police time. All right, Johnny, go on with me.
next guest is a lady what we just shipped in from America. Inside a crate. <laughs> she's a very funny lady. Ronia thinks she's funny. <laughs> you better think she's funny as well. So give a great big two Rons welcome. Or else. For Miss Kit Oliver. on the way over here, the driver was going on and on and on about how all Americans are obsessed with violence. I didn't say anything, but I'll tell you, I wanted to knife the jerk. <laughs> Before I got the taxi, I was hassled by this weirdo guy. He comes up to me out of nowhere, just comes up to me, goes, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> but then he goes, think about it. <laughs> Come clean, I'm in kind of a bad mood. I can't get my hair to do anything I want it to, like the housework. <laughs> so I, I figure, what the hey, I'll go down to Harrods, buy myself a lipstick to cheer myself up. And what a snotty store. I mean, even the window dummies have attitudes. <laughs> <laughs> so I go in there immediately, I'm drawn toward the Clinique counter because the women there are wearing white laboratory jackets. I'm thinking there's some serious stuff going on here. What do they got, gals on the back on stretchers? <laughs> OD'd on mascara? <laughs> I mean, I went in there for a lipstick. I thought they'd ask me for a urine sample. <laughs> And the woman who was helping me was incredible. She had one of those hairdos that veer up in the front, make little shelf units. <laughs> she was wearing so much makeup, it was a wonder she had any left to sell. <laughs> she gave me, she wrote out this uh, beauty regime, this routine that was so complicated. I mean, it, it made uh, British Rail's discount policy look simple. <laughs> when I first came here, I went up to uh, on a visit to Edinburgh, Scotland. I went to buy a kilt, something different for an American tourist in Edinburgh. <laughs> I went into the shop, I asked the guy for the Von Hollerbach tartan. <laughs> Interestingly enough, he had it. <laughs> he showed me something in a floral pattern. <laughs> when I left the place, I ran across a busload of American tourists. I looked at these people, I thought, I don't know what's worse, our dress sense or our foreign policy, really. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what it is about American tourists. It's like license to be a dickhead. <laughs> hi there, hi there, I'm Bob Johnson. Yep, I'm a dickhead. <laughs> She's a dickhead do. <laughs> and I figured out why they talk so loud. That's so they can be heard above those outfits. <laughs> I'm married to an Englishman. Uh, he's a typical Englishman. He's very reserved. In fact, it wasn't until after we were married I actually knew he wanted to go out with me. <laughs> I used to get these love letters from him that would begin with, to whom it may concern. <laughs> And uh, my husband wants to have kids, and I just thank God it's not biologically possible. <laughs> I mean, I could just imagine we'd be sitting around dinner table or something, I'd say, hey kids, shut up now, shut up and eat your burgers. I told you to shut up. Come on, put a lid on it, Sparky. I think you know what I'm saying. And they'll go, mummy's a medican, you know. <laughs> Quite dreadful, isn't it? <laughs> I like movies. I like uh, the Bowery Boys, the Dead End Kids. These were tough street kids who lived in New York City and they made a series of films about them in the 30s. And the greatest thing about these kids is they were some of the worst liars in the world. The scenarios would always run pretty much the same. I swear it, Capra, it wasn't me. It wasn't me what done it. Why, it was, it was Peeny what done it. <laughs> yeah, sure, that's it. It was Peeny what pulled off the milk truck deal. See, me and Benny, we was walking on the street, see? Yeah, sure, that's it. The street, it's all coming back to me now, see? The cop's always going, why, I ought if I had half a mind. <laughs> but also like uh, classics, like Gone with the Wind. I love in Gone with the Wind where Scarlett rips the curtains off the wall. She makes this beautiful dress to go visit Red Butler in jail in Atlanta. I thought, well, what if she lived nowadays? She had to wear a pair of Venetian blinds. <laughs> Then every once in a while, for effect, she'd go, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> My favorite, though, are horror movies. Horror movies where you hear on the sound effects things like, oh, 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 oh. Then 
and the gal goes, think I'll go for a walk down by that old deserted graveyard? <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening. It is with deep regret that we today learnt of the sad and very tragic death of that well-known show business star, Orville. <laughs> Orville, who would have celebrated his 422nd birthday this Saturday had he lived, passed away peacefully at one o'clock this morning inside a microwave oven. <laughs> The body of Orville, full name Orville short ass Little Green Dick, <laughs> was removed from the house today. On a plate. <laughs> Lovingly garnished with two pounds of roast potatoes and a whole packet of sage and onion stuffing. <laughs> Forensic scientists working on the case today positively identified the body as that of Orville from dental records and from the enormous number of old fingernails found up inside his backside. <laughs> The funeral will take place privately this Saturday, and Orville will be laid to rest 12 feet under inside a solid concrete lead-lined coffin, <laughs> beneath a simple headstone with the epitaph, Get out of this one, you mangy green flea bag. <laughs> there was a breakthrough today when police officers working on the case announced that Orville may well have been the victim of a grudge killing, and they've released the names of 52 million people they'd like to question. <laughs> and now... Keith, have you ever thought just how much he looks like Orville Harris? We'll have to pick up the pieces of a shattered career. Only today he was trying to contact Tracy Barlow from Coronation Street to see if she'd be prepared to act as a stand-in. <laughs> the police have asked us to remind the public that there is a reward concerning this case. All you have to do is go to your nearest police station, prove that you killed him, and the money is yours. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Killer. What? I don't know what's happened to you lately. You used to pour Castrol GTX on me hair. <laughs> and gob on me. <laughs> now you just buy me chocolates and flowers. Where's all the romance gone? Well, I'm fed up, Sybil. <laughs> I'm sick of leaving the chapter. I'm, I'm tired of wearing Black Sabbath T-shirts that went out of fashion 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm tired of biting the legs off live chickens. I'm tired of throwing up in people's pockets. But I've got extra pockets put on specially. <laughs> My mind's made up. I want to do things a normal person my age would do. You know, like wear casual men's wear slacks with a detachable belt. And, <laughs> and those fashion pullovers like what Frank Buff used to wear. Oh, I suppose it'd be all right if you smeared them in goat's crap. <laughs> Listen, Sybil, I'm not buying contemporary men's knitwear just to cover them in animals, do do. But why have you got to leave the angels? Can you imagine it? Hell's Angel riding down to Margate, bank holiday Monday, looking for trouble in a pair of Lord Anthony hip hogger flares. <laughs> and Gulvenic. Oh, yeah, and when I'm jumped by a gang of skinners, what am I supposed to say then? You come near me and I'll kick you to death with me hush puppies. <laughs> I remember when you were really tough, killer. It used to really get me going. Especially when you tied me out to the back wheel and took me for a scrape down to Brighton. <laughs> now look at you. What are you now? What am I? Who am I? What makes me what I am? Why? Why am I talking to myself? <laughs> Am I just another face in the crowd? <laughs> or will I ever raise my head proud <laughs> and be a man? But what, what is a man? What is a man? Well, a man is a man, and he does what he can when he can. A man is a man, and he might drive a van, and his friend might be someone called Stan. <laughs> when the time it is ripe, and his slippers and pipe, he will laugh at the very gates of hell. Ha ha! Though death may be coming, he'll be casually humming an extract from William Tell. Ba -ba -dum, ba -ba -dum, ba -ba -dum.
If you ask me what I am, what I am is a man. Yes, so what? But I am is a man. He's a man amongst men. He's the big as in Ben. And he makes a woman feel hot. He'll tease you, he'll squeeze you, he might even please you. But after ten pints, he might not. <laughs> Yet sometimes a man can be lonely. Sometimes a man can be shy. Sometimes a man will watch less. And sometimes that man will cry. Within every man there's a little boy. Each boy has a man deep within. But if you make a man of that little boy, you're a better man than I can get in. If you ask me what I am, what I am. Height of a plight, in spite of his tights being tight. Whoa, when he's left all alone, he will fight for the right. Even though he is left, he is right. That's right. So tell me if you can. What? What the hell is a man? He's a chap. He's a feller, a guy who ain't yeller, a chump made or pal, a guy who ain't a gal. He's got grit. He's got guts. What makes him a man? I am a man. I am a man. <laughs> There's Kestrel. And now, there's Kestrel Super Strength. People who know about bite, buy it. And it's my heart that's breaking down this long distance line tonight. I ain't missing you at all. Missing you. Since you've been gone. Hello, snow on the video. No wonder it's called freeze frame. Not anymore, Tosh. Digital chip technology. Fancy one. Don't mind if I do. Digitosh, eh? Brilliant. Slow motion. You could almost be there, couldn't you, Tosh? Tosh! Foster and Alan are back with a very special new album, Reflections. With 20 of your all-time favourites, Foster and Alan, Reflections, on record tape, CD and video. A great value gift at Woolworths now. Day 92, and everyone is pulling their weight. What a happy lot we are. Them with their pale and watery memories of home, me with my very own bottle of rich, mature Ember Cream. I can't watch. Where's Carruthers? Gone out. Oh dear. Missed yes. the Ember Cream. Yes. Thanks, Reggie, old man. Remember the Ember this December. A bit nippy out there. It's panto time. No, Ron. It's pantomime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably I don't like pantos. No, I prefer boxer shorts. <laughs> That's why we've booked the South Croydon Amateur Dramatic Society to do our panto. We booked them because they're good, they're talented... And they're cheap. 
<laughs> but because we ate pantomime, they've only got three minutes to do the entire story of Cinderella. <laughs> yeah, starting from now. Where's Cinderella? Here I am, I'm Cinderella. We're going, going to, to the ball. ball. You've got to stay here and scrub the floor. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Bye. I wish I could go to the ball. Hello. I'm your fairy godmother. Sorry I'm late, but I just come from a day job. <laughs> yes, you shall go to the ball. But I haven't got a dress, carriage, or any horses. Yes, you have. Stay outside. <laughs> Bye! Bye! Sometime later at the ball. <laughs> Prince Charming. And I'm exceedingly handsome. And I'm appearing at the Ashcroft Theatre Croyd. And I'm looking for the best bit of crumpet at the ball. We're the ugly sisters. We're the, sisters. We're We're the, the best, best bit of crumpet at the ball. <laughs> Joking on touch with a barge pole. Bye bye. 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 <coughs> now that's what I call crumpet. <laughs> Want to dance? Yes, please, but I must be home by midnight. <laughs> One, two, three, four o'clock, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve o'clock. Oh dear, it's midnight. Bye. Bye. <laughs> the very next day, but only last night I was dancing with the prince until midnight. Then I had to dash off and in the rush I left my slipper behind. <laughs> Shit, I forgot. <laughs> Let's do it again. Bye. Midnight and still no sign of Dick. Wrong panto, aren't I? <laughs> Sometime later, at the ball again. I am Prince Charming and I am exceedingly handsome again. I'm still working at the Ashcroft Theatre, Groyd. <laughs> and I'm looking for the best bit of crumpet at the ball. We're the ugly sisters, we're the best bit of crumpet at the ball again. Must be joking, I wouldn't touch you with a barge pole. <laughs> 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 Oh, now that's what I call crumpet. And the prince, want to dance? Yes, please, but you must be home by midnight. One, two, three, four o'clock, five, six, seven, eight o'clock, nine, ten, eleven, twelve o'clock. It's midnight. scrubbing floors but only last night I was dancing with the prince until midnight then I had to dash off and in the rush I left my slipper behind eventually <laughs> we're, we're the ugly sisters, sisters. We, we were having a good time at the ball last night while you were scrubbing the floor ha 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 <laughs> <laughs> look who's, who's there? there prince charming oh no, oh, no it's, it's not yes it is oh no it's not yes it is where are you I'm behind you oh no you're not yes I am oh no you're not yes I am and I should know you stupid old bags because I'm the prince now who shall ever fit this... <laughs> this invisible slipper? I will marry it right on. No? No? Yes, will you marry me? Yes, I will. And, and they all live happily ever after. Bye! And now, the entire history of Crossroads in one minute. <laughs> Thank you.
Once upon a time, <laughs> in King's Oak on a wet Thursday afternoon, just before I accepted my part in the Croydon pantomime at the Ashcroft... Shut City. up! <laughs> Miserable. Cedric. What, Eric? Cedric, this is a great party, all sitting in serried ranks looking at the back of other people's heads. <laughs> are all the middling bank Christmas parties as exciting as this one? No, some of them are boring. <laughs> Cedric? Yes? I've come over all funny. You haven't been looking at the brazier adverts in the Freeman's Mail Order catalogue again, have you? <laughs> you rubber-limbed Romeo! <laughs> No, Cedric, it's not that. You haven't been reading your Sid Little book of a joke again, have you? <laughs> no, it's not. It's... It's Stephanie. It's definitely what? <laughs> it's Stephanie, my girlfriend. She left me. She left me all alone in Brent Cross Shopping Centre. I had to find my own way out. <laughs> you wild and crazy 24-carat playboy! Oh, Cedric, it's serious. Look, we went Xmas shopping together and just as I was searching through the display of gentlemen's extra large wife fronts with a double strength gusset, <laughs> she turned around to me and said, Eric, I'm leaving you. And then she did. I don't think she loves me anymore. Well, what makes you think that, Danielle? Well, first became suspicious when we were out on a date. She soaked me in paraffin off of me cigarette. <laughs> You are a bit of a silly sausage. When I told you love is blind, you went out and bought her a Braille Valentine card. Yeah, I know, but I gave her everything I had. Yeah, maybe she didn't want cold sores. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just the cold sores. I, I gave her everything she ever wanted. Oh, yeah, like the times you said she wanted some saucy underwear. You bought her a thermal vest covered in tomato ketchup. <laughs> Turn me on. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy stud. <laughs> but don't worry, though, Eric. There's plenty more fishes in the sea. Look around you. Yeah, I suppose so. Hey, Cedric. <laughs> yeah? I really fancy that one over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a piano, you <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, mean, I try my best for you, Eric, and you always manage to muck it up, you great no-neck venture scout. <laughs> I mean... You're completing that a waste of space when God made you, he must have been looking the other way. You make me sick. Get out of my sight, I never want to see you again. Oh. Said you don't really mean that. Yes, I do. Go on, shove off, you social <laughs> cul-de-sac. <laughs> Cedric. Go on, go on, crawl back into your shell, you myopic mollusk. <laughs> <laughs> Slime off. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think you're going, then? I'm sliming off. <laughs> oh, thanks very much. Leaving me all on my own. <laughs> I thought you'd come crawling back, you little creep. <laughs>
guys. We'd like to thank everybody for giving us a great evening tonight. Yeah, we'd like to thank all our guests on the show, including... Uh, Doom McKeon, Helen Atkinson Wood and Harry Enfield. Not forgetting Tony Adams, Jim Davison and Kit Oliver. And of course, Courtney Park. And let's not forget the inimitable status quo. Oh. Management of Channel 4, Merry Christmas. And a happy new kneecap. <laughs> Peter O'Toole is on the run in the Night of the Generals. I asked you who was more important, a general or a corporal, and you answered general, and of course I agreed with you. But when the general should be hanged for a filthy, bloody murder... Then the corporal must hang in his place. Sandy, please try to do as I say and not as I do. Remember, you are a child, Sandy. And far from your prime. Maggie Smith is in her prime as Miss Jean Brodie. <laughs> And on Christmas Day, Sean Connery stars in the adventure movie Five Days, One Summer. Films for Christmas on four. Christmas, Christmas on, on four. four! Yes, of course, Christmas on four! Well, next tonight, tales from the Decameron reach the ninth day and the second story. There are bawdy goings on at a nunnery in a quiet woodland. Harvey's Bristol Cream. It deserves your undivided attention. Every year, some people have their gas supply cut off because they don't contact British Gas or answer our letters when they realise they can't pay their gas bill. The pity is that in many cases we could have helped. As soon as you realise you're going to have trouble paying, go to your gas showroom or phone the number on the front of your gas bill. We'll do our level best to come to an arrangement that lets you pay it off at a rate you can afford. So if you can't pay your gas bill, get in touch with British Gas as soon as possible. We want to help, and we often can. When we started renting televisions nearly 30 years ago, everyone thought they were magic. When we introduced colour, everyone was wide-eyed. And we soon became one of the biggest names in TV rental. Granada. Today, we're expert at bringing the latest technology into your home, whether you rent or buy. We have FST screens with stereo sound, videos with digital picture-in-picture, -picture, and LCD remote control, all delivered with that personal touch. Just walk into any of our 600 shops, and you'll see why Granada is the one to watch. <laughs> Love is the sweetest thing What else on earth could ever bring Such happiness to everything As love's own story Love is the greatest thing The oldest yet the latest thing I only hope that fate may Les Français adorent le Piador. 
irritation in the throat or air passages causes the diaphragm to contract. The vocal cords then open suddenly, releasing breath at the speed of a bullet. To relieve different types of cough, venas make different types of cough mixture. For example, Vino's antitussive formula relieves dry, persistent coughing by soothing the body's cough reflex. And like all these Vino's formulas, it does so without causing drowsiness. Whichever kind of cough you may have, there's an effective formula to suit because no one knows more about coughs than Vino's. Is he here yet? I wonder if he's changed. Coral. Coral. Coral for men. You can be sure of the effect. Inset, the original hairstyling mousse and inset hairspray. Inset, spiky mousse, spiky hairspray and gel. Inset, the hairdressing secret that's no secret anymore. Television, book, book. Three words. Three? Opera, Mozart's The Magic Flute. Poetry, Maya Angelou in performance. They say the black of the berry. Mm -hmm. Sweeter is the juice. That's poetry. And music by Segovia for this Boxing Day on Channel 4. Christmas on 4! Yes, of course, Christmas on 4! Now the second of the tales from the Decameron.